starring Bela Day in... But, Ma, that's my favorite movie. Oh, well, all right. But don't you spend too much time in front of that TV. Do you hear me? Yes, Ma. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my podcast. I am your host, Bela Day. And first and foremost, before we get into anything today, I just want to thank everyone that has been listening to the podcast thus far. Um, new listeners, people who are returning listeners, thank you so much. Because you could be listening to anything else, but you've decided to come over here. So I appreciate you. Now, today's episode is titled, But Ma, That's My Favorite Black Movie. Yay. And I actually have a very special guest with me today which is my Maja. Hello, hello, hello. And I'm super excited to have her on here with me today. And we are just going to have a ball. Yes, honey. Yes. Yes. Turn yes. up. Yes. <laughs> so in honor of the black movies that we will be discussing today, well, this whole episode is dedicated to the holiday known as Juneteenth. Yes. Am I saying that correct? Yeah, Juneteenth. June, I thought I was going to say teeth, but whatever. No, it's Juneteenth. Juneteenth. It's, yeah, it's Juneteenth. Okay, so Juneteenth is celebrated on June 19th, um, which is actually going to be tomorrow. Now, some may be wondering, uh, what is that? Like, I've never heard of that before, right? Okay, so actually, before we get into all of that, I'm just going to kind of give a brief overview of, you know, what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so one, of course, we're going to be talking about the Juneteenth and a little history about it. We're going to define black movies because some people may be like, what's a black movie? Yeah, I don't exactly. even know what you're talking about. Exactly. And then we're going to give a little teensy weensy lesson on race films and how they actually relate to what we consider black films today. And then, of course, we will discuss the main topics yeah movies movies all right so go ahead and we're gonna start with juneteenth in 1862 lincoln had actually gave an executive order which most people know as the emancipation proclamation, proclamation. which we did learn that in school so okay yeah, they did yeah, tell they us did. about that yes, they did. okay and that order basically was meant to free the enslaved people um, that were in the Confederate States because I want to say up north they probably didn't have that yeah. so they had to and Confederate States are basically the states in the south because they were still hot and heavy with enslaving right, folks right. and so it was ori originally issued on September 22nd 1862 and then it went into effect the beginning of that next year January 1st 1863 now, this was all during the time of the Civil War. So, of course, you know, they were having the battle about the enslavement of right. people anyways. And then, of course, other stuff along with that. Okay, so they were during, it was during the war. And the slaves in the Confederate States did not even have an idea that this was a thing. That they legally could not be enslaved anymore. So, they had no idea. It wasn't until Major General Gordon Granger had landed in Galveston, Texas on June 19th, 1865. And I don't know if I mentioned this before, but January 1st, 1863 was when it went into effect. So then uh, fast forward to 1865 on June 19th. Um, this was right around the war had ended. The Civil War had ended and he came over to Galveston and was basically like, y'all's free now. Uh -huh. Y'all ain't slaves no more. And of course they had no idea. So the slaves were like, oh, okay, of course they're hip to it then. And at that point with them having the actual knowledge that they didn't have to be a slave anymore. And then, you know, the sad thing is about it that they, that they didn't even know. It like, they was. didn't make it known. Like, I'm wondering, like, okay, but they didn't have radios or nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, because that was, so, so was the communication like, yeah, wasn't. So it wasn't like they couldn't. How could you broadcast exactly. something like that nationally exactly. to everyone? You know, like, we could do that easily with the turn of, 
uh, just one switch on of the TV yeah, or yeah. looking at your phone. And, and then the, the, you know, the white people, they kept them in the dark about it, too, because yep. they didn't want them to know because they still needed them to work. So Exactly. So that was that free exactly labor. Just, you know, shouting it to the mountaintops. Oh, you're free. Exactly. You know what I mean? that, so, and, and the thing was, they took advantage of the situation did, because of the fact that they knew that the slaves couldn't read. Exactly. So even if it wasn't exactly. a newspaper, exactly. they couldn't even read it to know. Exactly. And they clearly took advantage of them. Um, so that's why when when black people bring up slavery, it's not the fact like, oh, you guys were free. Why are you complaining? That was over 100 years ago. Right. You got to understand the the underlining, yeah. the... Oh, there I mean, was that's so, huge. That's it huge was, to have slaves. It was, was so... Like, yeah. It was so much more yeah, than just really being was. enslaved and then free. It was what they dealt with during slavery. It was what they dealt with post-slavery. Yeah. It was just no break. And then the fact that this executive order took place 1863, and they didn't know until two and a half years oh, later. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's horrible. That's two and a half years they could have gained a freedom. That is so horrible. So, yeah, it is um, crazy. And this actually became a state holiday in 1980. Look how long it took them to oh make that a holiday. God. That's horrible. 1980. Yeah, yeah. There are people born that are freaking, what, they're in their 30s in the 1980s? So okay. That was just 30 years ago they made a holiday. Wow. And technically, when they were free, it was like 157 years ago. But you think about that, that's like, it's long ago, but it's not. Yeah. And that goes to show you by being black that nothing is ever a priority when it comes to black people oh exactly you know what i'm saying it's True. like they just took their time like oh you know it is what it is you know we're just not gonna do anything they're black you know they don't and they sad. wouldn't mind they uh, first of all yeah. they're like they didn't care about them they really they didn't see him as human now this is celebrated or this is yes yeah, celebrated a day of observance, a day of a ceremonial a holiday. It is in 46 out of the 50 states wow. that it's recognized. So it's not even recognized in really all the states. And to really be honest, they no, really don't celebrate make, it. Nobody yeah. really celebrates it. It's like, okay, well, you had... Um, What's February? What is supposed to be Black History Black Month? Black History Month. So yeah. they 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 acknowledge that, but it, that's as far as it goes. They don't. And Martin that. Luther King Day, yeah. and that's it. They, so yeah. yeah, so like when I was saying earlier, okay, they did teach us about the uh, Emancipation Proclamation, but they didn't tell us stuff like yeah, this that didn't. slaves didn't even know until two yeah. and a half years later. So that's why you really have to go out, learn, yeah. g gain knowledge yourself, do your own research because yeah. you, you really know, do. and and it's kind of common knowledge at this point. The school don't teach you everything they teach they teach black people as if our history started with slavery yeah and, exactly. it, and it didn't yeah. um the four states that actually don't recognize it are hawaii north dakota south dakota and montana wow uh if i have some lizards from those states yeah that kind of sucks yeah <laughs> that really does but it seems like it originally started in texas and then it kind of expanded to other states right, and right. there are actually some other countries that celebrated outside as well so i thought that was pretty interesting oh, that is. all right moving on okay so what we're here to talk about today is some black movies yeah if you're wondering what is a freaking black movie what, what's a black movie mama black actors yep black cast, <laughs> black cast you know, content exactly the story is relatable to black people, people what they exactly, go through exactly. target audience is black for blacks yeah, exactly. it, it, it's gonna be a movie for the culture oh, yeah for the culture yes, okay honey, we can all get together exactly and have a big old kiki okay and a ha ha <laughs> a kiki ha ha, -ha. <laughs> and Black movies are very, I mean, we've came a long way yeah, we have. in the film industry. I mean, now we have, we have a man, a black man, Tyler Perry, yes. who owns the biggest studio. Is his studio, his, his studio is in Georgia, right? I think it is. He owns a studio bigger than, I believe, Universal. And I think he did it on a plantation. Yep. And that's like, wow. 
I mean, that is so encouraging. It really is. He, that he really, I would love to check out that set one And day. not only that, but he named uh, each of the lots after different. Uh, after the black, black actors, actors black actresses, yeah, yes, black actors, yes. black actresses yes, give him of a Hollywood. Hand, yes, let's give yes, him a hand. Because Tyler Perry, he, he you know did what, that. Do you hear me? Tyler Perry has came a long way. Some of his movies, of course, people debate about how he portrays black people, how he betrays black women, the black men, colorism, all that. Okay, if, but even past that, you know, Tyler Perry has done a lot for black people. He really He's made has. sure to put black people in his films. He's he made really sure to has. put them on the forefront. Yes. He, he has them writing. Well, I think he's he does. He writing. does the only yeah, writing. He, writing. <laughs> he said, "Ain't nobody writing." Okay, because I think he did say he did have some. He said, "I'll cast your black asses in the crew okay. and in the cast." For real. <laughs> but he said, "Y'all ain't doing no writing." Um, but hopefully, maybe in the future, yeah. he's probably gonna open that he did up. Say, but just, uh, I had watched something he was on. He was like, you know, he was gonna eventually do that. Have other writers. Yeah. You know, but I think that's to see their input. I think it's just he's holding on to it. Yeah. And I don't blame him because that's his baby. It's that's a certain. Like, yeah. That's what he, he has a certain formula. He has a certain right, way he does right. things. And he has and a that's certain just, audience. That's a, he knows, they, that, that knows. When he writes, you know, in, in the words of Tina Turner, you got your own style. Oh, <laughs> your own style. Yes, he got his own style. Yes, honey. Okay, and I know I mentioned earlier about race films, and if you're wondering how it pertains to what we're talking about, black movies, and I didn't know this initially, but um, race films are basically films that took place, films that were made by black people right. for black people. This was between 1910 and 1950. Wow. And this was actually after the time A Birth of a Nation came out. The original. Oh, yeah. That was real. So, yeah. So, because the original Birth of the Nation, it came out. And it was basically, um, like, defaming the black person. It was... Um, it was a derogatory representation of the black people and like yeah. the white people are the heroes and you know trying to save everyone from these black people. I haven't seen it, but that's just what I've heard about it. I'm talking about the original. Oh, this was like I was gonna say, I'm yes, like, this was I mean, before. This was like 19 what? something. I forgot exactly when it came out. Oh, so it already had a, a original one. Correct. Oh, yes. I never knew that. Birth of a Nation, the original one, came out in 1915. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, it was the Stoneman family finds a friendship with the Camerons affected by the Civil War, both fighting in opposite armies. The development of the war in their lives played through to Lincoln's assassination, the birth of the Ku Klux Klan. So, oh. Yeah. Because I, I didn't really know about the other one. I didn't know they had a, you know. The Birth of a Nation that we saw was um it came out what year did that come let out let me see which came out in 2016 and it was directed i believe produced and made yeah. by nat parker which is very that movie was actually very good yes it really was it was a really good movie it was that was kind that movie was kind of deep too it was it deep really was. i think it was i don't too think deep. the world was ready for it. they weren't they weren't ready for it because they didn't get the uh recognition i think because if got. you've not seen birth of a nation with nat uh nate parker he, uh, he was talking about Nat Turner and how he oh. basically rebelled against their slave, ma their right. masters. And they came out triumphant in the end. And, right. and that's not something mass media wants to see, see or no, can take they, at this point. Really it, yeah. yeah. I was real disappointed in that. I really thought they were going to do a little Yeah, and there was a bunch of stuff I remember on social media about it. Like getting, saying that the theater was full and it wasn't. Yeah. Getting tickets for other movies, not that wow. one. They, they, it, it was oh just bad. God. Yeah, it really was. It was bad. It was bad business. Okay, but anyway, so back to race films. So yeah, so they made these films, um, which are similar today starring black people was targeted to the black audiences they were made to uplift the black image and contradict any of the racial stereotypes right. that in any of the movies before now of course black people didn't have a lot of backing they didn't have the major production companies yeah, or really you know them. major investors to um throw throw in money into their films so pretty much one of the main one of the main people that invested into these uh these black movies were or these race films 
were institutes such as Hampton and Tuskegee, where, you know, those were black owned and operated. And, and of course, they just wanted to pour into that because they wanted good representation for the black people to be able to see, see themselves on the screen, see right, things right. similar. But it was, it just wasn't stereotypical stuff. Yeah. And, you know, the white production companies, they were able to distribute movies and then work on movies as they were doing it. But, of course, with not having the major backing, black films had to do one at a time. Yeah. So it's like they had to make a film. And I'm sorry if y'all hear a dog panting in the background. It's my dog being her. But anyways. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so they they had to take each movie one at a time. And one of the most known filmmakers, who was also an author as well, his name was Oscar Michonne. And he actually had his own production company. What? And there was a few other black production companies um, that were working and making films. and Because I think they said he pushed out about 30 films oh, himself. Oh, wow. So I've never even heard of him. Yeah. And it almost makes me think, because you know the Oscars? Oh, yeah. And I hear, I've read stories of different scenarios of why they called it that. But I low-key think maybe they got that name from him. Because he was like a pioneer. Yeah. And what we know is indie films today, they were doing that in 1910. Wow. They they had they were the original indie independent filmmakers because they had no choice but exactly. to. Exactly. So, yeah, I thought that was very, very cool. Very, very cool. All right, y'all. So, we about to, we're about to get into the main course for this evening, which y'all have all been waiting for. Yes. You listen to me. Your ways are going to catch up with you one day. A night filled with passion can give you a lifetime of pain. Darnell, there's a thin line between love and hate. It's a thin line between love and hate. All right, so that is the movie, the first movie we're going to get into today. A thin line between love and hate. Yes, this. Lord. This movie came out April 3rd, 1996. Wow. Okay, so we're going to get into what the movie's about. And of course, Mother, chime in whenever you want. I'm just going to do a basic synopsis here. Okay, okay. Um, so we, the movie starts off where we get to know Darnell. Darnell Wright. He's a ladies' man. Yes. He has a great way with ladies. He knows how to get their attention. He knows how to make them feel special. He knows how to make them, like, keep coming back for more. Exactly. And Darnell actually works at Chocolate City with his friend T. And he mostly brings his... That's his main thing is he he's like, I can give you VIP yeah, he, access. That's the way he lures the women in. Yeah, because yeah. they're like, ooh, you're... it's Because he's making it seem like he owns the club. Right, exactly. <laughs> that's what he tries to... But he's... Yeah. But he's, he's just like... He just works there. I guess he's like no, the promoter. Was, yeah, but I think they were... Uh, he he said partners. partners with the guy that originally... He did say club. partners because it wasn't until the end where he really was serious about like, hey, dude, right, I'm going to let right. you... Because I think he was kind of like letting him do his thing, which he did bring a lot of people to the club. Yeah, he, he really did. He really did. So one day, Darnell ends up getting captured by this woman named Brandy. No. Classy, classy Brandy. Yes. Okay? And initially, she's not giving him any play. Exactly. Because she's basically like, uh, er, like, do you see me? Yeah, exactly. Look at you. Like she peeps game. Like I know what you're all about. I know the type of yeah. You like you you you're that smooth talker. Yeah, you exactly. ain't about you nothing. You tell females what you think they want to hear, and, and she's not buying it. And, and you can tell them other little girls yeah, that, exactly. but I'm a grown woman exactly. over here, and that's no. It's grown grown over here. Exactly. And so, he actually begins to try to pursue her. Mm -hmm. And the stakes of it actually become really high when his friends are actually, they bet him that he cannot get in the draws. Exactly. They say, you can't get in the draws. Yeah, you can't get in. No. You, no, you can't no, do that. No, and he no, said, no. oh, no, no. He said, no, 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 no. You, you, you must not know me. Okay. I'm going to get in the draws. Okay. He oh, gonna period. Get, yes, yes. He going to get it in. I'm, I'm going to get By it in. By any means necessary. And so they make this bet, and his friend's like, and his friend is T. And it was T and um, one of the other friends there. I forgot his name. But they make the bet together, and he's like, okay, I'm going to get it. So he ends up basically kicking his charm 
arm in a high gear. He's just trying to do everything to win her over. And of course, initially, she's just like, she's just not having it. Right. And But I, the, I think the main thing was that she became a challenge. Yeah. Because every other girl, when we saw him interact with, it was easy. They were easily persuaded. Yeah, exactly. And charmed by him, but she was just different. But he had a whole, he had like a little handful of females he was messing with at first. Yeah, that see yeah. that's the thing. He he was that player. And they weren't no challenge for him. I they mean, weren't because it, it, it shows you in the movie how he has different types of females. Like one that has the kids, mm -hmm. one that just lingers on to his every word. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like you you see what he goes through. Why he has the history of being Darnell, mm -hmm. the person that he is. Exactly. So yeah, he's he's definitely not used to the fact that women, a woman turning him down. Yeah, that, that's just no. being turned down. That's not his vocabulary. Okay. And all while he is trying to pursue her because of this bed, because I guess it's to help his ego, he, we actually learn that he has true feelings for another girl. Yeah, he does. In the midst of all this. And the girl that he really has the true feelings for is actually a childhood friend, someone he grew up with. And I believe that some... I think it was a crush. You yeah. know, like, you know how you have when you're growing up and you... You never really make it official. But yes. You know. But y'all always had kind of like that right, chemistry. Right, and right. her name is Mia. And she actually, in the movie, she has just came. Well, she's like on leave or yeah, on break think, from yeah, the Navy. From, yeah, from the military. Yeah. And so they're kind of catching up. And we see a softer. Like, he's still himself. But you can tell he acts yeah. a little. He moves a little because differently than her. Because him and Mia has a little bit of history. <clears throat> so it's a little bit different. You know yes. what I'm saying? So, and she's like on that, she seems like to me like she has a special place in his heart. Like, yes. she's not just your typical run of the mill female. Exactly. Like, he really cares for her. Because she knows him. Exactly. And then, eventually, Darnell, he does end up winning Brandy over. And he doesn't realize what he's gotten himself into. Because mm -hmm. she was this, she had a hard exterior for a reason it was a reason why she didn't let people in exactly and basically exactly what the quote had i did in the beginning um that is like the theme of the movie exactly. what ends up happening to him you think you think you're gonna play all these girls and nothing's not gonna happen to exactly. you one of these girls are gonna retaliate exactly because not every, play with everybody's feelings not every female is yeah, the same they really are and I forgot to mention, the quote at the beginning was actually by uh, Darnell's mother, mother in the movie, yeah. who was played by the Della great... Della Reese. Yes, Della Reese. Exactly. Rest in peace. Yes, R.I.P. Yes. And actually, as we're getting into the cast, and actually, was there anything else you want to add to like the movie itself? Okay, one thing I did want to say, I remember when I watched this movie, like when I was younger, of course you don't have a good understanding of relationships. Oh, yeah, how people, yeah, because you're little. Yeah, yeah, and so, you know, I'm thinking she's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, from my perspective, I'm like, oh, she's just a crazy woman. Right, exactly. And when I watched it as an adult, I just realized, wow, I don't blame her for what she ends yeah. up doing to him. He, he did do... Uh, he, he, it was like you can't play you can't play with everyone's yeah, heart really like that really and then can. really expect that you gonna give him your mama especially mama's... somebody who already doesn't is, is, isn't the type of person to give you their heart exactly and she opened up to him and she did all that letting him use her limo you know just doing yes. everything she was buying him clothes okay. putting him in the limo yes yes and he sure. and he was like he played her because I mean, we know in the beginning the main reason why he really went at it is because he wanted... It was a game from to, the beginning. It was a game. You know. And his, he, his intentions weren't good. It was like They that. weren't. So, yeah, he was just he was just doing too much. He really was. I mean, you know, everything from jump from the bet he made with his homeboys, you know. Once he made that bet, it was a done deal. Yeah. Like, it was a game to him. Like, yeah. he, his heart wasn't really into her like Which that. we can tell just from the other females he talked to... He had got what he wanted from them and then right. didn't want them. Because you can tell he would act kind of like, uh, why are you over here talking to me? I'm trying to, right, mack, with a, exactly. I'm trying to mack with another girl. I'm going to need really you to leave. Was. Yeah. All right. So let's get into the cast we got here because we, we got some, uh, we got a pretty good cast here. So, of course, we have the Martin Lawrence. Yes, the hilarious. Yes. 
Uh, to be honest, I think he's my favorite comedian. I love Martin, Martin Lawrence. Martin is really good. I remember, you know, back in the day when, you know, when y'all were little and we used to watch Def Comedy Jam. Yes. That's, those are kind of like his earlier days. Mm-hmm. He has so much fire, so much but energy. you know when I saw him on, and it really, I never knew he played on that. And what? it was on What's Happening. He was on yes, an episode of What's he Happening? he played like uh, uh, Raj and uh, Rerun. He played like their friend. Because wow. I was watching it, and it was like, I guess it was like in the early 80s, maybe. And I saw him on there. Okay. Yeah, back in the day. And I was like, oh, my God. He was so young. He mm-hmm. could have been a teenager. I don't know. I mean, don't quote me on that, but I'm just saying he looked real, real, real young. This is, I think, when his his little humble beginnings before mm-hmm. he really, really started. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. And so, he you know, he's known for, of course, he had his literally his own show. Yeah. Loved that show. <laughs> And Bad Boys, Big Mama's oh House, House Party, Do yeah. the Right Thing. I mean, the list goes on and on. Yeah, and he's on. come a long way. Then we have the, uh, I don't know if she's married, but we have Lynn Whitfield. Oh my God. She's a beast. She is a beast. She and does. She it. just has this elegance about she her. She really does. She's very elegant. Very elegant. And every classy. role she plays in, that's her character, pretty mm-hmm. much. Because that's just her. I could never see her playing a crackhead. Oh, or, yeah. You know, uh, she, like I said, when she plays somebody's mom, she plays very elegant. Mm-hmm. I, I love that about her. She she plays that part. She, yeah, really, she I does. think that's really her personality, too. Yeah. It seems like yeah, that's she's her. Just all, she just always carried herself very well. Yes, she really has. And then we have, oh, and then just a movie... Um, that I can think of that she's been in Josephine Baker story. Oh yeah, I love that movie. Eve's Bayou. Oh, she was which really I could, good I'm gonna talk that. about that movie because that's a good movie. Oh my god. Period. Um, then we have Regina King. Yes, Regina has the yeah. re, the black dress. Okay, yes. black Hollywood. Regina King is she, really she's she's she come very, a long way from two two seven hundred. Yes, because that she was, has and, and didn't she do the voice on uh what's that cartoon? Which one that y'all watched when? Yeah, oh, know. the Boondocks. The I didn't really Boondocks. watch the Boondocks. Oh, okay. But she also played in Friday. She was in the movie she Ray. She sure did. And she played in Boys in the Hood, honey. Yep. She sure did. Oh, yes. Regina King, she's played in a lot of movies. Then we had Mr. Bobby Brown. Oh, Bobby, Bobby, uh, Bobby. What's the, what's the song? Dun, 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 what, My Prerogative? Oh, no. Don't be cruel. No. Yes. Don't, Don't be cruel. cruel. Hey. Because hey. I, I would never be that cruel to you. Yes. Hey. No, 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 and, Bobby. And Bobby was pretty good in there. Bobby, you know what? When I was growing up, because we're in the same age group. I think he might be a little bit older. We're about the same age. Yeah. Uh, I was not. I did not think he was cute. <laughs> but, like, now I'm grown, grown. I'm like, damn, Bobby was fine. Like, really? Like, what yeah. was I thinking? But he really was fine. Bobby was fine. Bobby was fine. You know. But, but you know, we all, okay. we all get older. You know, we get, we get a little chunky. You know what I'm saying? But I look back at it now. Bobby was fine. I was like, God, dog. I don't know about that. I mean, to me, I mean, now, you know what I'm saying? But when I was growing up, I never was attracted to him. Yeah. I never thought he was, you know. Yeah. That one, but yeah. All right, and we're going to go to the the great Della Reese. Della, oh, makes you Della Reese. Yeah. Um, she is probably known for. Well, she was known for what songs? <laughs> I don't know what songs, but I know. Um, that was before my time. Okay. Uh, so Nana would probably know yeah, that. Yeah, Nana probably would. Really <laughs> granny, you know, people like that. Um. But she played in Harlem Nights? Yeah, she played in Harlem Nights. She did that, honey. Yeah, she played she, in some she, other movies, she's too. She's a good comedian. She's oh, Was she a comedian? She's done Or she just had, roles. like, good timing. She played in, in uh, it was a uh, show she used to play in back in the 80s. Uh, what was it? Touched by an Angel? Oh. In the mid-80s. Mid eighties, yeah. Because I mean, I remember. I think it was called Touch by an Angel. Yep, Touch by an Angel. Yeah. It came out in nineteen ninety four. It was oh, a okay. real good show. All right, and then we have Melinda Williams, who played 
his sister, the one who was dating Rodney oh, or Reggie. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I think yeah, his name was Reggie. Yeah, yeah Reggie. Yeah. And um, she, she played, played on Soul Food. Yeah, she the played series. on The Wood. Yeah, she sure did. She sure did. So, yeah, she's definitely, a, she, was, she was in a lot of other black movies as yeah, well. Yeah, she really was. Um, then we have Daryl Mitchell, the one who had the stutter in there, who was uh, working at the club oh, with them. And he also he played in Groovy Chill. He used to be with a group back in the. the uh, yes, really? Honey. I don't think I knew He was that. the one that was on House Party. I Remember? know. Yeah, what I just yeah, said, yeah, yeah, House Party. Yeah. So him and Martin, they had previously worked together because House Party came out nineteen ninety. Was it ninety? Yes, nineteen ninety. No, it, it, it was because when I, when when it came out, I mom, it's not. I did I, I did a party episode. Just just previous episode was House Party. It was not ninety. Yes, mom. Because they, Amber they was just born came in out the cusp of uh. Because I remember I was in high. Me and your dad was in high school. I remember that. Girl, let me show you. See, 1990. No, I'm going to have to argue that down. That's not... <laughs> 1990. Maybe it was. Yes, girl. Girl, I can't keep up with these years. March 9th, 1990, girl. Wow. It was the cusp of the 80s, girl. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Um, then we have Miguel A. Nunez Jr., the one who played Reggie. He didn't have a huge part in it, but we know him from oh, Joanna Man. Oh, he was the uh, the chicken fixings. <laughs> the chicken. <laughs> the chicken fixings king. You know. He brought the chicken over for you know, her. I was leg, so done. The leg, the thigh, and the biscuit. Yeah, that, that's him. That's him. Yeah, I was so done with that. Okay, and then this was this movie was directed by Martin Lawrence. Oh, I never this, knew that. Yes. Wow. And, and this was his directorial debut. Mm. So this was his first time directing a movie. Um, and then just to get into some trivia. So during this movie, they Martin was going through some things. Wow. See, I, never I think knew that. yeah, I think he was like, I don't know what type of drugs. Or what was going on with him? But that, see, this this was all pre before internet and, exactly. and all that. So you know, you weren't in the loop of what was going on with the celebrities exactly. back then. So now you can look stuff up. You know, they have little shows where they're showing stuff about you know what they biographies and stuff like that. With what they went through in yes. their life. But back then, that was kind of pre before the internet. Exactly, and yeah. so because I never knew all that. Yeah, in the L.A. Times, they had literally right around the time this movie came out had did an article it's funny because i was looking it up because i was trying to figure out what exactly happened right. so i remember reading about it but i wasn't sure if i had read it correctly right right but right. basically i don't know if this was during the filming filming hours if it was after if it was just in between shooting but he actually ran into bit uh ran into the street what? during busy traffic Ooh. and he was cursing and yelling at cars and he had a pistol on him. Oh no. So I don't know if he was trying to provoke someone so he could just really go off. Right, right. Um and then they had to end up hospital well, he got arrested and they hospitalized him. I think because he was just in such a rage. Right, right. And they probably right. knew, okay, he And by him being the celebrity that he was, it was like, wow. Like I don't know. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this was around the time when he had his show too, when Martin. he was doing Martin, and that's when the whole situation no, with him. Martin and, didn't come out. Well, no, yeah, yeah, you're yeah probably it was around right. the same you're time. Right. Well, the only reason why I know is because I forgot which season. I want to say the first or second season. He had Lynn Whitfield as a guest, oh. and they was oh. like basically kind of playing off of. How they acted, yes. Yeah, okay. That was actually in the later episodes because that's when they weren't showing Gina in the episodes. Oh. So I think he was like in a manic state right, around this right. time. Like, he just had some serious issues, girl. Wow. Um, but yeah, that's all we got for A Thin Line Between Love and Hate. And we're going to jump into our next movie here, which actually, one last thing I'm going to say about Thin Line Between Love and Hate. I feel like it put black people in a different space. Right. Like, kind of like... Other than us just being funny, but t like, cause as far as Lynn Whitfield's character, how she played this crazy, she ends up playing this yeah. crazy person. Cause it had a mixture of comedy, drama, yes. thriller. You know, yeah, it really did. It had all So I there, feel so. like it put a bl like black yeah, it people in a really different good. space. Yeah, it really It didn't did. just like, it was like real people. Yeah, right. Like I think anyone could enjoy this movie. I don't yeah, think you just have to be black. Exactly. Like it's, anybody it's could movie. watch it yeah, and be like, cause it, it, it gives you... Uh, fatal attraction to yes. You, get, you know what? That's really what it is. It, it, it gives you fatal attraction. Like it gives you, um, well, not really. I was gonna say basic instinct. No, not really. That movie was no, weird. not. Uh, but yeah, fatal attraction tease for sure. So I just wanted to finish that out. Okay, moving on to the next movie. So what's the procedure when you have a gun to your head? 
What the fucking procedure when you have a gun to your head? Now see that? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know everybody should know that. Everybody yeah, knows yeah, that. Yeah, y'all should know that, y'all. Yes, honey. So, we are about to get into the movie. Set, Set it off, it honey. off. Set it off. Set it off. With my Set girl, Queen Latifah, yes. Yes. and she this did that. And it's funny because I didn't even plan this. See? But this movie came out November 6th. 1996. What? I'm assuming 96 was probably a good really year was. for black movies. Yeah, they, it really was. The it 90s was. was a good yeah, era. Really, music and all that. Yes. Black, man, it really it, was. Talk about black excellence because R&B was on the yeah, map. oh my God. The really black was. movies, black, I mean, black sitcoms. Yeah. Oh my oh, gosh. Sure UPN. All that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, black people were really doing it. They yeah. were thriving in the 90s. They really were. They were really able to step up. Those were the come up. It, yeah, it was the come it really, up. It really was. Very enjoyable. Even though I was like you were a, little. a toddler. Yes. But I still remember it. Yeah, because it's the stuff you just remember. Because, you know, I used to watch it. Your dad used to watch it. So, yeah. You know, it's just one of those things. It's memories that's in your head. You know what I'm saying? You'll never forget it. Exactly. All right. So, and set it off. Okay, so we first get introduced. The first person we get introduced to is Frankie. Yeah. Because we are going to learn that there is, there's Frankie, there's Stoney, there's Cleo, Cleo yeah. Tishon. Is that how you say Tishon? Something like that, but they call her TT in the movie. Yeah, TT. We're going to do TT. And so we first, in the beginning of the movie, we introduced to Frankie. We find out she works at a bank. She has a good job. Yeah. She, she's doing good so for she's herself. Been there, what, I think she said two or three years or a year. Yeah, it was, I, was it a year? Maybe like I, two years. Yeah, I think she said two years. Yeah. And so. It's it's starting off as a normal day. She's kind of not saying she's chilling, but you know she's working. Yeah, she's Everything's work, good. Like, yeah, life is good. No complaints. It's, you know, <laughs> until yeah, um, you have to have the friend who ain't up to no good. Which I don't even think he was a friend who's just an acquaintance. Yeah, she, like you know, like if you just know somebody like a neighbor, maybe she grew up with him. You know what I'm they saying? lived in the same neighborhood, exactly. so she knew him. She's yeah, seen him. Yeah. So initially, when she sees him, she's like. <laughs> I didn't know you had an account here. Okay. Like, okay. I ain't mad at you. You know, we all got to come up at some point. Exactly. But then she gets a rude awakening when he pulls out a gun and he's like harshly whispering, like, give me the money. Like, exactly. <laughs> and she's like looking at him like she's tripping out. Like, like don't bro, do this. Like, <laughs> the fa- first of all, the fact that I know you yes. and your ass is don't coming in well. my bank. Exactly. At any bank you could have robbed. You exactly. chose my bank. Exactly. And and I know you, so I'm dealing with, like, the devil and the angel exactly. here. You know, I'm just like, what the heck do I do? And then she ends up noticing his little accomplices are scattered around because yeah. they're kind of looking at each other. Because she probably done seen them in the hood. She, she yes. knows. It's like, oh, my God. And so he, of course, they end up robbing the bank. Once the bank is robbed, then Frankie is being questioned by the the FBI and then also of course the oh, her, her manager's yeah. there and the the uh FBI agent he asks her he goes you know what's the procedure when someone's robbing the bank exactly and then she was like like basically i know what you're telling me i know it frontwards and backwards but like i didn't want to risk getting killed exactly like I, it was just an intense situation. You can't, re- you can coach people all day of how exactly. to act until in situations really until yeah. you're actually in that situation. Exactly. It's a whole different story. It really is. And basically, they ridiculed her for it. Yeah. They didn't give her any mercy. They didn't. Um, they didn't give her any. And another reason too, I think, is because they knew that she knew him. And I almost wish she never even told them. Yeah. She really didn't even have. She to was tell. like, he's just somebody from around the way. Like I, you know. I don't know, but I guess... Because I don't, I don't think know. I would have told that I knew that dude. But at the same time, I think she was just being honest. Yeah, like, and this is why I didn't be. do it. Because, exactly. you know, a part of her feels bad, even though she knows what he's doing is wrong. Exactly. But it's like, I don't want to... Like, I, she was like, I just didn't want to be in between it at all. Exactly. I didn't want to give him money. Like, I don't have no parts of this. But they're thinking, oh, but just because you know him and you're black, y'all have some cahoots together. Exactly. So we can't... Um, we cannot 
trust exactly. that none of your other friends are going to come up here or you're going to be in, in real cahoots next exactly. time with someone because we let you stay Because they really here. don't know she had any parts of that. I mean, exactly. Because but, she knew them. But they so. just assumed. Exactly. And, and so that's where that, and actually that line that I did in the beginning, that quote that was by Frankie and um because the fbi he, agent he was really pressing her about well what is the procedure Peter, when yeah. you have when the bank is being robbed like what are you supposed to do so anywho they do end up firing her which it's just a bittersweet yeah it there's no like i'm trying to think she got a little bit of history with the job she wasn't there a long time yeah but she was there long enough to where she had stability and she was like and you she know even what? just got promoted exactly she even just exactly. got promoted and so then we end up um, going into the next scene where we see that a party being thrown and we're getting introduced to all of the uh, the main players yeah. in the cast. The which, friends, the homegirls. The know. friends, yeah, yeah which yeah. I had mentioned earlier. And so um, what we're learning from this group is that they're all going through different stuff. Exactly. They all have just... I mean, it's life. You're going to exactly. go through stuff. Nothing's going to be perfect. But these particular women are kind of dealing with kind of dire situations yeah, exactly. and just trying to keep their heads above water. Because we have Frankie, of course, who just got fired. Exactly. Then we have Stoney, who is trying to work her butt off to help pay for her uh, brother's college. Yeah, she's Stoney, trying to yeah. get the money. She even got to the point where she was sleeping with folks. Correct. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So she had to make some sacrifices yeah, to really get did. money. Exactly. Um, then we have TT, who is a struggling single mom who can the job she's working, she can barely afford daycare. She can barely like she's barely keeping her head above water. Um, and then we have Cleo. Which I was trying to really figure out. The only thing I can think of is that she just didn't like her job and just her life. Like where she was at in life. I think that was her biggest dilemma. Yeah, she... I don't she know, wanted she more. She just lived day by day, I think. And yeah. it was like, okay. She, she, you know, she had to hustle. She had to do what she had to do. So that's why they cleaned buildings. Mm -hmm. But you, you think about it. She was the one who got everybody else on in that job. Correct. Okay, so yeah. Ta and then we... um. We we learned that all of the ladies are working for the, working at this cleaning service. It's called Luther. like Luther something. Luther's cleaning. Something. Yeah, and so Luther is an a hole. Okay. Okay. He really. Is. We don't like Luther, but Luther's funny as hell. But he we don't really like is. him. Yeah. Luther's um. Because because what we did learn is he don't mess with three the people. <laughs> There's three people he don't mess with. Okay. The, the I, I, the, the aura, and, and the, the S. S. No, okay. Period. Nah, he don't do that. Okay. No, period. Do what, that. what are you fucking? Mighty Morphin Power Ranger, what you gonna do? He, he was, was too. I mean, he he was really funny. Yeah, he was really good. But anyway, so they work for him. He's an a hole. He barely want to pay them. He don't treat them like they're human. He thinks he can talk to them any kind of way just because they're working for him. He's just a mess. So then Frankie ends up hopping on to that job because the three girls are already working there anyways, which is TT, Stoney, and Cleo. And then Frankie just got fired. So, hey, you'll work with us. So as they're working together, they're all realizing the different situations and stuff that they're going through. And so then they... Well, Cleo first introduces or... um Oh, what's the, how you say it? She like teases the idea. Why don't we just rob a bank? Because everyone knows about Frankie's situation. Exactly. And how, well, when they heard about their, you know, the, uh, the friend that I guess they all, you know, everybody yeah, who knew grew up in the neighborhood. Yeah. How much money they had got. Yes. So it was like, and everybody's struggling. It's like, and they're man. like, um, we're way smarter than exactly. them. Exactly. Like we can do this. Like, yeah, we're way more smarter. We could do it way better. Exactly. Especially because we have someone who works inside the bank. Bank. So she knows, she knows yeah, the ins and outs. The, exactly. And at first, it's just entertaining. They're just like, okay. But then Sony's really like, I'm not finna do all that. I'd rather sleep with man to get money. I'm not finna rob no bank. Exactly. No, like <laughs> no, she kept it real, though. She kept it real. So then, um, a, a, like a big turning point in the movie, because like I said, the idea was teased. It wasn't anything they were going to take seriously. But unfortunately, Sony's brother ends up just getting caught up with one of the bank robbers. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, yeah, they gets was the bank same, robber. Yeah, he was one of the bank yes. robbers who had this, like, not unusual. He had this unique um, 
cut haircut like had these letters AP, yeah. in the back of his head and so what happens is when Stoney's brother goes over there first of all he don't know that he's affiliated with that robbery exactly he and then no the idea. guy offers the robber was like hey we can get you set up with your hair because uh, her brother had complimented his hair was like oh I like that that's tight and so then he does his hair blah blah whatever um, once the brother's leaving Little does he know that the FBI and all of them are already have been on to yeah, they him. Basically made and, and what gave department. away was that dang haircut. Yeah. So they're thinking the brother, they're not paying attention. They think all black people look, look alike. alike. Exactly. And they end up. And why would he get the same stuff? But Dang, see, I don't he didn't that. know. He didn't. Because trust me, if he would have knew his situation. He definitely would have not gotten that haircut, period. Yeah. But he didn't know. He's hanging out with him. He's like, we're having fun. Why and not? And I know that guy knew that them cops was hot on his trail. Yeah. Like, they knew. Because they had a stakeout in his place. Exactly. So, they knew. And so, he ends up leaving out the apartment. He's surrounded by cops. He's trying to let them know that he doesn't have a weapon on him. And he's pulling out this bottle because... Um, the robber had gave him a bottle like, "Hey, you can have this." Mm-hmm. He's trying to pull it out. Let them well, because he had gave it to him because he was graduating. He had graduated. Yes, that's why he gave that's it why to it him. Was. Yeah, because he was graduating. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. So he graduated. He said, "Here, little homie, you know, have this yeah, bottle." Exactly. So he's Here's like, a "Okay, then." Celebrate, you know. And little did he know that bottle was gonna be his demise. Mm-hmm. Was gonna be the reason for his demise because as he's pulling it out, they start shooting because they recklessly. think he has a gun. And then they, he was already told them no. Like when I'm like, it was. Wow. I'm like, do you? It, it's just, it's just a hot mess. But yeah, anyways, really so you know, Stoney's brother ends up getting killed. Now, what they realize is when Stoney goes to the crime scene, she, first of all, well, she doesn't really know, but Frankie knows that this is the same cop mm-hmm. that was drilling her the day that that robbery exactly. happened. Exactly. So I feel like. Because of what happened to Stoney's brother, because of what happened to Frank, like Frankie's situation, how she knew him, and I'm pretty sure they told her, like, "Hey, that was the same cop." It wasn't like a scene where they said it, right. but it was like you we all about knew. Fa- yeah, the facial expressions. Yeah, because like, it's like you for real. Yeah, because Cleo was like, "Oh my god, you got to be tripping!" Like, yeah. This. So this dude, he he's gonna drill and ridicule my friend because of the situation she was put in. Then they are gonna kill my other friend's brother. Exactly. Oh no, and I felt like that was the straw that broke the camel's it back. Was. That was the the uh, green light. Let's do this. Yes, that really made it official for them. So after that, yeah. So then that was like all bets are off. Yeah. Let's rob this bank. Okay. Because first of all, at this point, they feel like, what do we got to lose? lose. Exactly. One lost they brother they're working at jobs they don't like frankie you know she ain't where she want to be because you know she lost her and good she's job. already feeling some type of way anyway so it was just like a lot's going on let's just do it if exactly. we can get easy money like that we're smarter than we could do it and so they robbed the bank and this is oh, this is such a great movie I, I can watch this movie today and still enjoy it exactly it's really good. It's, it is. It's a good movie. It's it, a good movie. Even watching it as an adult, you know, I have an appreciation for it. Yeah. Because I, I, I feel like this movie... Because you understand uh, things a little bit better. Oh, about, you know, yeah. well, they were robbing banks, but... You, you know, you, you got to see their circumstances that led to that. Exactly. Like, you don't condone it, but at the same time, yeah. you understand it. Yeah. When you're living paycheck to paycheck, okay. you can understand the what people do. The struggle is real, honey. Some irrational I mean, stuff. me personally, I ain't trying to rob no banks. That, me that, I don't get down like that, but, you know, it was good entertainment. It was. And it was good writing. Yeah, it was. It had an all-star cast. It really did. This movie holds a lot of weight. I feel like it's going to stand the test of time. This one and Thin Line, I think these are movies that people can continue. And and again, I think this is a movie anybody can watch. Yeah, anybody can watch it. And It's like the cast was so good and the writing was really good. It's just overall, it's, we consider it a black movie for the culture, but this is a well-made movie. I don't feel feel as though we have movies like this these days. Uh, we, we don't really get don't. solid black yeah, movies with don't. good story, good acting. Yeah. Like you, either, you're gonna have some of it, but the you're not story gonna have lines all. are really. I don't know. A lot of it now these days is so cheesy. Yeah, like it's taking. It just done took away from all that. You're like, really. So, what are your thoughts on them remaking Set It Off? Like a part two? No remaking it no some things you just need to leave alone now my girl my girl Issa Rae I love you girl but don't do it no we are 
we are a new gen. <laughs> just like F. Gary Gray, just like Martin Lawrence, what they did, they were pioneers. Yeah, they created their own genres. They created their own original. Because Thin Line Between Love Eight, that's original. That's, yeah, that's original. You can't, yeah. Set it off. And see, that's another thing, too. These are original you know, works. Yeah, yeah. These black people didn't have to pick someone else's story and then make it put black people in it. These these were their own stories. Exactly. So and you have to appreciate that. So come on, black people. We we can come up with good, just as good, solid content as that. So let's get into the cast here. So we have uh, uh, Stony, which was played by Jada Pinkett Smith. Yeah. Jada Pink was so good at her prime. She really was. She was very good. She was good in Low Down Dirty Shine. Yep. <laughs> she was so cute. She was so... And honey, before then, she was in a different world. Yes. Yes, honey. She always played that tough girl. Yeah, and she you believed it. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I believe she could kick it someone's ass. It wasn't no work for her to do that. That, that, that seemed like that's just her <laughs> That name. was her personality. Yeah. Then we have the queen. Every Everyone wants to claim that they're queens, but this the queen is Queen Latifah. Okay. Period. Yes. Okay, that's on her birth certificate, so she is the queen. Um, and then she's played in movies like Chicago, Bringing Down the House. Oh, yeah. She, she, she sure Taxi. Yeah. Taxi was Last good. Holiday, yeah. Beauty Shop. Yeah. Queen Latifah has oh, quite a resume. Bessie, too. Bessie. Bessie was really good. I really enjoyed Bessie. Yes, yeah, she she has quite the resume. And she did. And then, I, and this movie also was kind of a pioneer for her. Um, introducing like lesbianism in like the black community a little yeah. bit because she played saw, a lesbian. I was like, oh my god, that tripped me out. I mean, like a kissing scene but like and I said, everything. Queen Latifah has that alpha female, so yep. you already, you know, so it to, to find out that she's playing that character, it was perfect. But in a way, you're kind of like, okay, we assume that, that anyway, yeah, 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 yeah pretty not much. too far fetched, yeah. Um, then we have Vivica A. Fox. Who was a great actress. I just wish she didn't do what she did to her face. Yeah, she was she, beautiful the way she was. She really was. And Vivica A. Fox, I mean, people sleep on her, but Vivica A. Fox was a good actress, too. She is. And she still does a lot of stuff. Yes. But she's mostly known for her earlier things. Back in the day, I remember when she was on Generation, so... Ooh, I didn't even watch so that. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Because you, were, you weren't even born yet. I think oh, okay. I was liking it. But I'm saying, even like you having on watching it, I never remember hearing yeah. about that. But yeah, she played in Kill Bill, Independence Day, John oh, yeah. Q. I didn't. I forgot she was in that. What's it? What's she playing on John Q? The wife. No, she did. Was she not the wife? The one Kimberly Lee that played. What's the name? Oh, my bad. R- yeah, wrong line. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. Yeah. Never mind. Vivica was not in John Q. No. But Kimberly Elise was in John Q. Yeah. Uh, and then I, wasn't she in Beloved? No, she wasn't in Beloved. Who? Elise? Kimberly Elise? No, Kimberly Lee was in that. I feel like I think that was one no, of her. It wasn't Kimberly. Oh, actually, you know what? That's not. Just X that out. Forget I ever said it. Um, but one of I guess she like played on uh, Diary of a Mad Black Diary Woman. Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Tyler Perry. Yep, yeah, that was like I guess one of her. Besides this role, like another major role, but she's played in other stuff yeah, as she's well. She's played, played a lot of stuff. stuff. Yeah. Um. Then we have John C. McGinney. Um. And this was the that was the FBI agent. The white guy. Oh, yeah. He's played in a lot and, of stuff, too. Well, one thing I saw that, like, he's played in, like, shows and stuff and lots of movies, but he was, like, a main player on the sh- show Scrubs. Oh, with Don- yeah. With uh, Donald yeah. Faison, who played in Clueless. See, I, never watched I never watched it either, but I just remember, like, I, he's, like, a funny guy on that yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. So this role was a, was a little serious this for him. This was before Scrubs, honey. I don't want well, no, no scrub. scrub. Okay, then we have Blair Underwood. Oh, Which everyone man. knows Blair Underwood. Okay. He's played in Tyler Perry films. Apparently you Deep know Impact. What? Now that you mention him, he actually played a good guy on Set It Off. That's what I was thinking. Oh That's what I was thinking the whole time. He was... usually is the bad guy. And he did very well. He's always playing roles where he's I, abusing women or I wish he would some type of way too. I, to be honest, I wish he got more good guy but he is good but but yes but Blair you know Underwood, what? That's he's, what he's good too for. that's what he's known for he's very good but yes. he did so good as a good guy yeah, he really did. like you just rooted for but him but it's like, kind of like okay that's his humble beginning like when he first started now it's like you know let, 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 let's 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 bring the let's bring the nails out there. yes you know. and then we had a cameo by dr dre he was in a few scenes oh yeah dr dre i forgot about that dr dre he's good he's good and then this was directed by f gary gray and he actually had a cameo in the actual film like it was yes. a scene with him and queen latifah like they was so he was doing the hydraulics honey because i did not know who that was yes he also directed friday mm. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah, he he he's the uh, he's doing it, honey. How, we say black dress, black dir- How do you say director but black? Uh, I don't know, but anyway. Um, so, so to just get to the cr- trivia real quick, um, this was the film debut of Kimberly Lee, so that's why I took back oh, what I said because okay, this was yeah. her first movie. That's what I was gonna say. I know she wasn't in no beloved. Um, some of the first drafts of the script, they had Stony originally as a as um addicted to crack. Oh no! And but no. they read it. I'm glad they did that because oh, we didn't need that in there. That didn't. No. Even, that's so unnecessary. Yeah, that they wouldn't have went with the storyline. I like how she. I can't see that. I love how she was. I mean, they were all for the most part making an honest living. They weren't yeah, selling drugs. Exactly. They weren't. Well, I don't know about Cleo. Even though it came out being negative, they robbing banks and stuff. But you. Know. But they were just normal people. Exactly. Um, and then this is Queen's first leading role in a feature film. Oh, okay. And this film, uh, originally, they were just going to have Jada and Queen star in it. Oh. But I guess then they were like, okay, we got to add some more people. Yeah. It, Which, it, it, it really made it complete. Yes. Because I, I couldn't picture it now like that. With just Jada. Yeah. Now, do I feel like they can hold a movie on their own? Of course they can. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's just... It was perfect the way it happened. You know played what? Out. And like I said, everything happens for a reason, and the people they had, the cast was perfect. was perfect. And that's one thing I would tell you in film, because um, I kind of had this mentality: if I'm not the first pick, I don't want to be no pick. Exactly. But but in film, no you could be the hundredth and seventh you know pick, and would be the uh, perfect celebrities person. Celebrities have had roles that they didn't take, and somebody else took it. Another celebrity, yes. You're like, I couldn't picture it, and they say exactly. About the other like, well, I'm I, glad. That I will literally did it. see like on. Um, IMDB a list of people that they wanted for one role like 10 different actors but then they landed on that one so right, it's like right. and plus scheduling cl- conflict you know different stuff could come up and happen and then you know I feel like what's meant to be is meant to be exactly and, and that's the same if I someone feel. who you thought ideally was going to be good for the role mm-hmm. you found someone totally better exactly they used almost half of the budget wow to paying for the use of the theme music from The Godfather. Oh, my God. Oh, they had to pay for that. Mama, yes. You, I cannot wait till the day that I get to be on a set and, like, learn about what they spend on songs. Wow. Because I, I really want to know. That. Yeah. I never would have thought that. That's crazy. I didn't think wow. for a theme you'd have to pay but that much. But they wanted it, though. They wanted it because he said, this is going to be... And look look, and look at Set It Off now. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's look a at, staple. Look, look, yeah, look at look at all the stuff they're doing now. Exactly. They are doing it. Especially Queen Tips, you know, had her own talk show and everything yes. else. Yes. She is doing it. Jada, honey. she's... Well, she, she, she kind of... And then of, they just did the Clark Sisters. Yeah, she produced it, I think. Yep, her, Mary J. Yeah. Blige. Oh, yeah. I mean. Now, can you believe this? Regina King auditioned for the role of Frankie. I could see that. I, to be honest, this is one that I've heard of that I could actually but, see but happening. But Frankie, even though Frankie was the one who had the brother, right? No, no Frankie Stoney had the brother. Oh, okay. Frankie, Frankie was the one who got robbed and lost her job. Vivica. Uh, I guess Regina could. Well, the only because... I've already seen the end product, so it's like I can't. Well, I but can't. let me tell you the only reason why I say I can see her doing that role because how she was in Poetic Justice. Yeah, that's true. just like because Regina King can play a classy person. Yeah, she can. She can. And no, Frankie I'm... was she was like classy, bougie, ratchet. Yeah, she <laughs> she got everything she, of it. Yeah, because she had a, a regular job for a yes, minute, so she wasn't job hopping. So you know, she had that stability. She knew how to carry herself yeah, in a professional exactly. environment. Even though she probably stayed in the hood. Exactly, she but she knew how to clean up. Yes, yes, and she knew how to act right. Exactly around the white folks. <laughs> Period. All right, so that is all the um, trivia that I got for this movie. Is there anything else you want to add? This is just a great... These two movies, I was really excited to talk about. I was just super excited to, of course, do the episode with my mom as well. Oh, thank because you. I, we, I was excited too. I grew up on it. Okay. We grew up on the black movies. grew up on it. Because, you know, I watched that. That's, yes. That's just what you do. You know, you just... Your kids, you know. 
Yeah, my parents, they showed me so much, so many movies. That's not even funny. That's I'm like, that's why I'm like, it makes sense why I want to be in film. Because exactly. we grew up around exactly. just, we went to Blockbuster every weekend. Okay. My mom kept movies on the shelf. Like, yeah. it was really just a did. thing. We just watched movies. And we there was plenty of times where we would be gathered around watching movies together. Yeah, we did. We did. We sure did. Oh. <laughs> Even though you had us watching movies like Booty Call. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, you know, but, yeah. but that's so funny, though. But, but, I mean, you know. but, you know, my parents, they did not show me from any movies. Exactly. They let us watch pretty much everything. I mean, because you was going to watch it anyway. You was going to see it somewhere. True. See, if you act like something's wrong, then that's going to make y'all really want to watch it. And see, that's why see, I didn't end up why... pregnant as a teen. I wasn't acting exactly. crazy okay. because my parents pretty much was like, exactly. here, you know, we had rules and stuff, but I pretty yeah. much had a lot of freedom. Yeah. I think yeah. Pretty... But y'all were good kids, though. Exactly. And we also kids. earned your freedom exactly. and respect exactly. to be like, and your trust exactly. to do things. And y'all so. weren't acting... And even for y'all age, when y'all was smaller, y'all, you know, y'all was real mature for your age. I wasn't like, you know, like giggling about little stuff you see or whatever. You know, you bro, know. I do that now. I'm childish. Okay, but you grown now. You grown, I'm childish. Grown now. You grown, grown now. <laughs> All right, so, okay, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this um, episode up here. Um, of course, we have our social medias that you can follow. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, if you are interested in being a guest, possibly, if you're interested or have any movies you would like me to talk about, any themes you would like me to do, um, then you can email me at buttma, that's my favorite movie, at gmail.com. And then any of the social medias, you can literally put in but ma, it's my favorite movie, even though I know it's a long title, but still. Um, and if, if you just want to be updated and know about current episodes or just anything that's going on with the podcast, definitely follow those. And we're pretty much available on all major platforms and yeah i enjoyed doing this episode i, I hope did. i enjoyed i it. hope y'all learned a thing or two because mama gonna be back okay well you gonna be back for the uh biopic i can't wait to do that oh, one. Oh okay, yes okay okay all right guys well thank you so much for tuning in um the credits are rolling the show is done yes. I, I will see y'all at the next show time okay bye bye